Hey church, we are so excited for this series we've been in. We started a series this past week on the armor of God, spiritual warfare. And so Pastor Amy and I, um, we are going to be doing a weekly talk show talking about spiritual warfare. That's and right. we thought of no better guests than our founding pastor, Pastor Ken, to be our first guest on our weekly talk show during our spiritual warfare series. And so I can't wait, church, for you to hear from the wisdom and the insight and perspective of our founding pastor, Pastor Ken. So let's start us off. That's right. We're kind of making you our answer man, so we'll see what <laughs> <Yes>. you know. <laughs> the um, Highlands answer man. I like <laughs> if that. If you guys have questions, this is who to ask. This is who we ask. Um, I think my first question is, how important is it mm. to be aware of the spiritual battles happening around us? Well, you know, I think that uh, we need to realize that battle is happening whether we mm. are involved in it or not. I mean, you can't opt out. Right. If you're a Christian out of spiritual battle, because you're under attack. Yeah. And but I, I think when you come to the book of Ephesians, you know, it's so sexy to really go right to spiritual armor and talk about the armor of God. That's a great topic and really needed topic. But yeah. we need to understand that the book of Ephesians is kind of so typical. Mm -hmm. Paul, the apostle, he starts out in the first section of the book uh, talking about truths that we really need to understand really we call it the doctrinal section mm. of, of the of his book and uh when uh we understand our position yeah. you know the truth of our position in christ the scripture says first of all that the son of god was elevated to sit at the right hand of the father he's seated high above all principalities and powers and every name that can be named. He, he's, yeah. he's powerful over dominions. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to know that when you come to the sixth chapter mm -hmm. because we're going to deal with those dominions. Right. And, and so we need to understand, it says he is seated, but then chapter two says that we are made because of our faith, because we put our faith in him, we become Christians, then we are seated with him in heavenly places. Yeah, that's good. And so when we understand that we are seated with him high above every dominion and every power, it's from that position that's good. that we can then he, then he talks about walking, our walk, our Christian walk, our duty, how we respond. That's, that's the practical section. Mm -hmm. So it's really two parts of this practical session. There's, there's the part of, uh, uh, of our walking in the world, mm -hmm. uh, our relationship with the world, but then there's also the part of our battle with, with Satan. Yeah. So we have to we have those three key relationships: our relationship with God, mm. yeah. and our relationship with the world. Mm. Yeah. You know, we've we've got this flesh nature that we're struggling and battling with. That the devil doesn't make a sin. Mm. You know, he can create a system. The Bible says he's the prince of power of the year. He creates a a system in the world. Mm. He uses people to create that system that tempt us to sin, but we have to choose to sin. So we've got this struggle going on uh, on uh, just in terms of our, our testimony, our walk mm. in the world. But then there comes this battle with the devil where he just attacks us. And that's when we need to have on right. the spiritual armor. Mm. That's good. That's good. So Pastor Ken, we, we read and we saw this past week about our enemy is not flesh and blood, yeah. but it's the powers of the air. But why do you think Christians, and we'll speak to Christians, why do you think we get caught up so much in the flesh and blood enemies? Like we battle each other or other churches or other Christians, maybe because they believe something different. Why, why do you think we get sucked into yeah. that battle rather than the spiritual yeah. battle? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's because we don't really understand who the enemy is. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, we don't understand that behind all of that yeah. is, is this person called Satan mm. and his dominions. That's good. One third of the angels of heaven fell with him. And he's the head of that whole mm. minion, that whole army of demons. Mm. And so we think that we're battling with with flesh, with a person. We make a person our enemy when it's really Satan just using yeah. it. Yeah. Now, that's why it's so important that we understand that when we come to Christ, that we are seated. See, when it says we're seated with him in heavenly places, it, it means that we've put our trust in him. Mm. We understand that he's the power. It's not us. We can't beat the devil in our flesh. Right. It's it's the fact he's already beaten him. Yeah. And so when we put our faith and trust, we rest. We come from a position of resting. When we rest in him and our relationship with him, then from that position, we begin to walk out 
our, our lives. As he, the Bible in Ephesians 2.10 says that we are the workmanship of God created for good works. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can do those when we understand that our real power comes from our relationship with, with him. That's right. Yeah, let me ask you a question about that, um, if I can. I think it can be a little bit confusing as a believer to realize that, hey, we have Jesus in our life, we walk with the Holy Spirit. How is it that the demonic forces, these spiritual forces are able to, um, to really mess with us mm -hmm. and, and get involved in our lives? Is it possible that we can have demonic presence in our life as well mm -hmm. as um, presence of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. We need to understand as Christians, there's no way that we can be possessed by mm -hmm. a demon or by, by the devil. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't be affected or influenced mm -hmm. by outside yeah. forces. Okay. And as you know, we spoke of this system that the uh, devil, uh, Satan, is in charge of these systems, mm -hmm. principality, pr principality of the air. Yeah. And, and he's organizing these systems and, and he's always, you see, he can't beat God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the Amen. only thing he has is to try to defeat his followers. Mm -hmm. But if we always lean back into God and not try to battle him in our own flesh, mm. um, then, you know, and realize that he, he's already been defeated. Now, I think that God uses, actually uses what the demons try to do. The Bible says what he intended for evil, God works right. for good. I think that he tries to, he, God will use that in our lives to hone us and, and to accomplish something in us we're not completely aware of what God's doing, yeah. but but God is working through what, what the enemy intends for evil, yes. God will actually use for good in our lives. Yeah, that's good, yeah. that's good. So Pastor Ken, you've been preaching for a long time, you've been leading church for a long time, and I know you've been doing, you know, you taught on spiritual warfare, all of these different things. So what is maybe your best piece of advice for our church as we're in this series of spiritual warfare that you can you've gleaned or maybe that you've shared just to, to remind us, because we're entering spiritual warfare. We know that it's all around us. We're talking about it, services. So what's maybe a piece of advice you can share with us practically um, that would help us in this war? Well, I think it's something that we uh, already talk about. We already uh -huh. believe. Mm. And that is that this is a time uh, for us to really press in That's good. Uh, to our position of rest with God mm. and into our to understand who we are. Mm. And this book is so important. Yeah. Yes. You know, to to help us to understand, it just loaded that we've been mm -hmm. blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly yeah. places. I mean, so many wonderful gifts that we've been given, and it's all in the Word. The, the Scripture says we will know the truth, mm -hmm. yeah. and the truth will set us free. That's good. And so we've got to get into understanding and getting back to our relationship with with Jesus Christ, our Savior. And uh, just press into that. Stop trying to fight the devil and, and, the, and the flesh in our flesh, but to really rely on the confidence that we get from knowing that we are, we are his chosen. Mm -hmm. It says yeah. we're chosen by him, yeah. predestined for greatness and for dominion. And so when we press into him and understand our relationship with him, I think then the armor you know, becomes really real. It becomes powerful. Mm -hmm. If we just try to put on this kind of armor thing, we've got all the little graphics that we use, and right. you know, and, uh, that, that's all good, but but we really can't understand the power of the armor if we don't understand the power of a relationship, mm -hmm. the relationship that yeah. we have with Christ. Uh, and this is a time to get back to that, I think. Let's talk about relationship with Jesus and what that means to us as believers. That's good. I love it. That's good. Thank you so much for being yeah. with us today. I know, that's awesome. It's been incredible to be able to just ask you questions yeah. um, and that you're available to us for that. Yeah. My pleasure. And we can't wait for this series, uh, Church, as we are going through each individual piece of the armor. We'll be yeah. having various guests with us throughout the, our bonus content weekly talk show. And this is a very real and important topic. Yes. And we know that the enemy is not flesh and blood, but like Pastor Ken said, it, it's the principalities and the powers of the earth, that is the enemy. We focus on them. And remember, like in week one, we stand firm of uh, what God's called us to. And so we look forward to uh, having different guests going through each piece of the armor. So join us next week as we look at the armor of God.